Yeah, good day everyone. My name is Marvis Oji. I want to especially appreciate Dr. Um, Tomo Adeniji and the Hidden Music Network team members for you know putting up the Hidden Music Network conference, which is an annual music conference for music ministers. It's been a blessing over the years, and I really want to appreciate them for all their efforts. Uh, by the grace of God, today I'm going to be speaking on. Um, something that has to do with the process factor it's one of the topics that was that we uh, dealt with some years back at the hidden music network um conference the process factor now what i what i'm trying to establish with this is that um, we need to start understanding that life is a process nothing happens all of a sudden and what will best this understanding is when we begin to see life from God's perspective. A lot of people don't see life from God's perspective. A lot of people lack understanding of how God sees life and how that God wants us to grow through a particular process so that he can use that process to build our stamina and character for greatness. The kind of stamina and character that you will need to sustain greatness. God will not just push you up to a particular height in life. He will need to take you through a process. So that's just a little bit of what I just want to share with us this evening. Now, the challenge we have in life is that so many people see life from their own viewpoint. Whenever we start seeing life from our own viewpoint, many times as human beings, a lot of things will affect the way we see life. Our upbringing can affect the way we see life. Our experiences in life can affect the way we see life. Our personality, our environment, and the things we observe happen in the life of other people. Uh, as a result of that, we usually draw conclusion about life and how life should be. But that's not how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be able to see life from God's own viewpoint, God's own perspective. Many times, some people, as it were, also see life as a race. So because they see life as a race, they engage in unnecessary and unhealthy competition. I want to be here at this time because this person is here. Or you, you view the other person as your, you know, competitor and you're rushing. Some other people will also view life, you know, like a game. So the smartest player, the person who is smart, will always get the prize and all that. And for some other people, life is a gamble. Whatever I will be, will be. I'll just try my best. Anything that happens, that's fine. But that's not how God views life. I want to say categorically today that God sees the life we are living presently on earth, here in time, as a preparation for eternity. God sees the life that we are living here on earth now in time as a preparation for eternity. As such, it is a process because on the other side of life in eternity that matters and is more real than even time, our placement, our rewards, the things, the position that we're going to occupy in the other side of life will be largely dependent on how well we performed here in time. I will explain. I will explain. So just go with me. So God does not want us to view life just from our perspective. He wants us to understand that life is a test. So if I am here on earth at this point, and whatever I do on earth will determine my placement in eternity, then there are certain things that God will do to bring me through a process so that he can test my character, so that he can test my ability to sustain greatness, and that eventually determines my placement. Now, how, how did I get to know that? The Bible says in the, in the book of Revelation, it says, Behold, I come quickly, my reward is with me to give every man according to how their work shall be in other words where did you do the work here on earth in time and where am i going to give the reward the other side of eternity according to how your work shall be that's how your reward will be so life is a process life is a process it's a test god is putting if you look through the page of the scriptures let me just show us a few things it will help you all through scriptures i realized that god was testing people's character from Genesis to Revelation, everything that God was trying to achieve was to test people's character. He's testing their character. He's testing the love, the love of a person. Sometimes if the person loves him, sometimes he's testing the obedience of the person. At other times, he's testing their loyalty. At other times, God wants to see their heart of generosity. I'm going to pick a few examples, and I believe that will help me buttress this point. Number one, you see Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. God wanted to test their obedience. Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden. God had given them instruction on what to do, what not to do, the tree to eat from and the tree not to eat from. 
God wanted to test their obedience because God who sees everything knows what he has in store for them in the future. If they are able to pass this test of obedience now, then I can be sure that they will obey me in every other thing that they will be doing with their life. Of course, God would have come right there in the Garden of Eden, attacked the serpent and told Eve what to do instantly so that she wouldn't eat the fruit. But that's not God for you. Remember, he would take them through a process to test their character and God was testing their obedience. They eventually failed at that point, but thank God for the second chance that God had, you know, restoring man to himself in Christ Jesus. Number two, you also see Cain and Abel. God wanted to test their heart of honor. Who will honor me most? How would you, would they know how to honor me as God? And you see Cain and Abel eventually, Abel understood, he got the gist and he honored God, he bought the best. The Bible said he brought the best to honor God. But Cain did not do the same thing. At the end of the day, God saw who really would honor him more between Cain and Abel. Again, in the scripture, you see Abraham. <laughs> Everywhere in the scripture is full of the tests that people undergo in serving God. Why? It is their process to test so that God will see how they are building stamina, how they are building character for greatness. So Abraham had worked with God 75 years of his life and God had promised Abraham a child. At the end of the day, for many years, close to when he was about 100 years, he had not gotten that child. And God was testing Abraham. It was not until after Abraham had gotten the child, the child was now grown. God wanted to test the obedience of Abraham to see whether he can actually be the father of faith and father of nations. Then God said, Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and use him for a sacrifice. And guess what? Abraham passed the test. Then God said, now I know that you love me. In other words, Abraham who left his father's house, left everything, all he had acquired. God didn't see that he loved him yet. Abraham followed God for 20 to 25 years, you know, denying himself, depriving himself of so many things, walking, you know, living in tents. God didn't see that he loved him yet. He was still able to wait, endure, and got Isaac as the promised seed. God still didn't see that he loved him yet until God asked him, give me your only son, your only son Isaac the one that you love you see and at the end of the day God tested Abraham and Abraham came out strong then God said you will now be the father of nations because you did not withhold one I will give you many so we see that it took God several years of testing to bring Abraham to the place of greatness there's a process in life. We live in a world where people are so much in a hurry. They want to hit it fast. They want to make it big time. They don't care about what they do. They just want to be there. And God is saying, that's not how I train people. Look at Jacob. The experience that Jacob went through. God wanted to test his loyalty. He was in the house of Laban. He served. He did many things. For about 21 years thereabouts, he was serving just to get his wife tests he went through process after he came out god now saw that yes this guy i think you are fit to do the assignment of being the prince from whom all these other nations the 12 tribes will come out from so you see there are so many examples okay joseph is a very good example joseph had followed god he had denied himself he gone through a lot of process already from the house from the pit he moved into the house of potiphar in the house of potiphar god tested joseph's character there and joseph passed the test you know by saying he will not sleep with potiphar's wife ensuring that he did not do anything against god then god promoted him instead of promoting him to a better place he moved into the prison for doing what was right this was all a test so God didn't mean evil for Joseph. God wanted to see Joseph's life, see Joseph's character, and see if Joseph would be able to handle the kind of leadership that he was going to bring him to in the future. Eventually, Joseph passed that test. He got into the king's palace. At the end of the day, he became the prime minister in the land of Egypt. So many people would have given up. They would have said, God, no, you can't do that. This is how, how would you make me go through? And guess what? Every time God is taking a person through a test, God knows that you have learned something or you have heard something or there is something that is built inside of you that has the ability to overcome that test. Because there's no test that comes to a man that is from God, as it were. Trials, uh, trials are things that happen in life. Temptations, as it were, they're from the devil. But tests can come from God. God will give a test to see if you're really following him so you see at the end of the day joseph was able to pass his test daniel shadrach meshach abednego the hebrew boys they, they were able to pass their test and they were promoted they became senators if they had compromised and they have failed they would have died like all the other magicians in the land of babylon so what am i trying to say here life is 
a test. Samson failed his test. His purpose was clear. His assignment was clear. Everything about the life of Samson was set. God has seen. He has strength. Everything he needed for greatness. But along the line, Samson could not stand just the little test of overcoming sexual immorality. And from there he fell. So he could not stand again. And God decided that I was not going to use judges anymore. Then God moved to another dispensation. Why? Samson failed God. Peter also had his own test in the New Testament. You also see that Paul had his own test. Trials. He said three times, have I besought you, God, to take away this thing from me? And God said, no, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. It is when I have taken you through my process like gold that will refine you. I will remove the impurities. I will ensure that you eventually emerge and become what I want you to be. But the challenge we have in this world today is that a lot of people don't like the process. They like the price, but they don't like the process. Everybody wants the price. Everybody wants to get there. Everybody wants to be announced. Everybody wants to be talked about. But many people do not want to go through the process. And I just want to emphasize it this morning that, see, there's nothing meaningful in life that you will achieve except you make up your mind you're going to go through the process. So why does God put people through a process? Why? Simple. Because character is both developed and revealed during your test time. So God will take you through a test in order to process you, check your character. Because it is the test that will reveal your character, the stability of your character, what you have learned. When students go to school and they, they have read everything from the lecturers, you know, you've written notes. There must be a test if you have to pass to the next level, the next class. So what God does with our life is that after we have learned certain things at a particular stage, when he's about to move us to another stage of our life, then he will take us through a test. And as soon as we pass that test, it shows that our character, you know, has crystallized for the next level of greatness. So that is the reason why God takes us through tests. Can I even say that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Bible says that he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. If God will take his son Jesus Christ to test, he was tempted of the devil. He, when he went into the wilderness and he went through a whole lot of things, much more you and I. So you and I must understand that God is going to take us through a process in life. You must start from one place. A lot of people want to achieve what other people have achieved, you know, within a period of 10 years. They just want to get it in one year. And that's the challenge of our world today. It's very, very crucial that we start seeing life from God's perspective. We understand that in everything we're doing in life, God is going to take us through a test process. And when you go through that test process, He will remove the impurities. He will work on your character. He will build stamina. He will build stability in you. And at the end of the day, like gold that has been refined, ready for the master's use, you will come out. You will become a wonder. You will become a sign. You become one that the world will start talking about. There's so many things to share, but I'm going to stop at this point and trust God that somehow we'll be able to share uh, on a broader note many other things that contains, concern the test and um, you will also learn. Thank you very much for taking our time to listen to me. Prepare your hearts. The Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. For the trying of your faith, work at patience. Let patience have a perfect work in you so that you can be thorough and tired lacking nothing. Thank you very much. God bless you.